a full-time artist, a lover of illustrated books, video games, and anything colorful and cute. Vinokar is an artist and a kid at heart. Her creative outlets led her to discover what she loves to do the most and ultimately what brings her joy. Listen as we discuss how boredom can lead you to a path which will propel you to create, listening to your gut and pursuing anything that brings you joy, how to play with shapes and textures, factors to consider prior to making the jump to creative entrepreneurship, six ways to sell your art, and finding your focus to determine which stream to pursue for your art business. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etcherlab.com. Hey, this is Jesse, and I'm an artist and studio host for Etcher Lab. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. So join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. Uh, first, thank you so much for having me. Um, so my name is Vina, and I am a mixed media illustrator based in New Brunswick, Canada. Um, I study graphic design at the New Brunswick College of Craft Design here, um, and I enjoyed that program. And I enjoy graphic design, but it wasn't my calling. And you know, at first, graphic design was my career, and art was my hobby. But over time, that kind of flipped, and mm -hmm. I eventually stopped doing graphic design, except for within the realm of my own business. And I just do illustration full time now. Um, in terms of what influences my style. Um, I'm 27, but I'm kind of like a big kid at heart. I play video games and like I almost exclusively play cart or watch cartoons and really like collecting illustrated books. And I guess I'm just kind of like a silly person. So I all of those things um, just influences my style. So it's very like stylized and cute and colorful and like, you know, playing with shapes and textures and just like having fun, you know, my my art isn't saying anything profound, but it, it's just an outlet for me to be creative and experiment with the different types of characters that I can create. Um, and one of those characters named Velvet is actually based off of my cat named Saw Velvet. That. Yeah. And that is, that's the star of my upcoming children's book. I don't currently have a release date, but I'm in the process, the publishing process now. Um, so the book it's about a day in the life of my indoor cat and she gets into a lot of trouble and you get to learn about her personality and her preferences and her um, just the mischief she gets into throughout her day. Wow. That's just an amazing journey. I mean, very concise being a 27, but having a kid, being a kid at heart and that really reflects with your style and the colors that you you chose for your art pieces. So at 27, you mentioned that you started graphic design and then mm -hmm. art was just a hobby, didn't it flip? But growing up, have you always been interested in art? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, since I was a kid, I mean, I remember my mom had a job at one point and we were going on like a lot of road trips because she had meetings so it involved me being stuck in a car for a mm. while and I was bored to death so I would just find like a napkin stuffed in the door or like an old envelope and I would just doodle on it and like <laughs> that's kind of like how it started and of course I always loved like crafts and coloring and I was really into paint by numbers as a kid I looked like oh, paint wow. outside and uh -huh. paint by numbers and so yeah I always loved that stuff since I was a toddler probably amazing it's it's interesting most of the people that I've had on the show they're really creative ever since they were they were a kid but it was really it came to a point for them that this is really what I would like to do and you mentioned that you're a full-time professional illustrator and I read that you started doing that in 2019. Can you yes. take us through the journey of that decision process? What made you decide to really go on full time? Yeah, so I I was working for an arts nonprofit. Well, technically, I'd worked for two. I worked for one on the provincial level, so Craft mm -hmm. and B, and then uh, moved on to a nonprofit for the national level called the Canadian Crafts Federation. And they work specifically with fine crafts people. So people who are maybe doing wood turning ceramics, like working in the 3D realm of art. Um, and I was doing graph design and marketing for those companies. And I loved working with the artists, but I wanted to be the artist. I didn't want to be the graph designer or the marketing specialist. And 
And my, my colleagues and my employer were really, really supportive of my pursuit in art. And I was slowly getting more and more interest from the local community here in my work. And then I started getting like shops in other provinces carrying my work. Wow. And, um, and at one point, you know, I just, I realized like the job I had wasn't bad, but it really wasn't making me happy. And I was coming home with a lot of stress because I had a job where it was just a whole lot of responsibility. And all I wanted to do was make art and focus on my business. It's like, I would work, I'd work full time, come home from an eight hour shift. And I spend the whole evening either making art or printing products or doing all the other things that, you know, is part of running a business. And it was, I just wanted to make that my full-time focus. So I like pinched pennies for months and I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure I have a solid amount of savings. So I think I made sure I had like four or five months savings. So in a worst case scenario, if I make zero money, I'll at least be be okay for a few months. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've been, I've been doing it full-time since then. I, I count myself very lucky, especially having, you know, this global pandemic to deal with that has really affected a lot of small business owners and artists like myself, but I got by. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. And thank you for sharing that decision process. And one follow up question that I have, Bina, is were there any fears and uncertainties or like, should I really go on full time or, you know, hold back? And there were, were there other factors that you were considering before you dive into full time? Yeah, I mean, I was just scared about making ends meet. Like, how am I going to pay rent and also keep my business afloat? Um, yeah, so I mean, it was definitely like a financial concern primarily. I think mm-hmm. ultimately why, I, besides just wanting to make art, I knew I'd be happier and I'd, I'd have a healthier state of mind and maybe a healthier lifestyle because I'm not literally working 24-7. Now I have the time to take an evening off or the occasional weekend off if I need it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I was just, I was just very scared of making ends meet, but I'm kind of lucky in a sense where I live and work. I, so I, I live and work in Fredericton, New Brunswick, which is the capital of this province. Mm -hmm. And I believe Fredericton has the highest amount of professional artists per capita in all of Canada. Plus I live in New Brunswick and I mean, things are starting to change, but it is like compared to the rest of Canada, a lower cost of living. Mm. And, um, and with, with the large amount of professional artists comes like an extremely supportive community of people who want to support artists. So I, those definitely contribute to my success and to my ability to actually do this full time. Um, so I'm really, I'm really thankful to like the community here and like, like count myself lucky to <laughs> live where I live. Um, but yeah. Like what you hear so far? Make More Art the Podcast is made possible by listeners like you. So we would like to give a shout out to Misty L from the United States. She said, short and digestible episodes. Glad to have found the podcast. Kikonia from YouTube said, this was one of the best podcasts yet. Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Financial I think you you nailed some really good points there, you know, when you talk about community, the support, and then factors that can contribute whether you would really want to go full time as an artist. What was the main focus of your business, your art business? Was it creating for uh, for clients, like commission works, or were like merchandise? Did you focus on just one product, or was it like spread out and targeting different markets? Yeah, so I think in the very early beginning, even before I was doing it full time, I was kind of just selling a lot of originals, like just, you know, paintings, and I'd, you know, find a place to put them up. I would either put together like art shows with some other like students that I knew, or, you know, just just find a place to display my work. But over time, now that I have like a more established business, and I'm doing it full time, um, the focus starting out was, I guess, primarily stationary. So I was designing a lot of greeting cards and I was selling them retail, but also placing them, like selling them wholesale or selling them uh, on a consignment basis in shops, which I still do. Um, And then I was also doing commissions for clients. So mostly pet portraits in the beginning. So if someone wanted like a cute picture of their dog, like I would do that. And I still do that work. Um, A lot of like my products 
hasn't really changed that much. So I currently sell stickers, greeting cards, and art prints. And then I'm still doing the custom artwork for people. I've kind of expanded to the type of custom work I do. So I'd say the most popular thing I do now is family portraits that people can have, you know, maybe it's a, a couple and like their their dogs and cats mm-hmm. together yeah. and that sort of thing. And and I and I'm still selling to shops as well, or at least placing mm-hmm. my product to sell uh, via consignment. I'm going to touch on the part about involving uh, shops and boutiques to carry your products in just a bit. But I would like to touch on the style because your your style has changed quite a bit through the years. And how long have you been um, illustrating, by the way? Um, I would say a few years. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like I probably started illustrating around when I was studying graphic design because illustration was a portion of that program. Um, But then probably like 2018 is when I really got into doing illustration. Okay. So yeah, like what I said, I've I've seen your style really evolve through the years and you also do this artist art versus artist. And I can see that it has really changed through the years. What were the influences or factors that made you decide to shift from one style to another? Well, it's hard for me to say if it was a conscious decision. Like, I think Mm -hmm. starting out with illustration, I felt a little bit frustrated with myself. And I think a lot of other artists feel this way. Like, I was like, I don't have a signature style or I don't have a consistent style. Mm -hmm. So I had to... I mean, for a while, I felt like I was just making art and sometimes I liked it and sometimes I didn't like it. And then over time, I, you know, I, I, and part of it came with just getting better at drawing too, or getting more comfortable with my medium. So I work primarily with watercolor. So as I became more confident using watercolor, you know, that allowed me to kind of refine things a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think it's evolved just because I'm more comfortable with the materials I'm using and I'm more comfortable making art in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the Dessert Dino series that I've been working on where I, I combine desserts with dinosaurs and they turn them into- That's a very interesting you know, combo, Vina. <laughs> I would just have <laughs> to say you, that's a very you. interesting combo. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, I think in continuing that series, I eventually- stumbled upon something that I liked and I tried to you know continue doing that so nice round shapes like I tend to make my characters a little bit fatter than maybe they would be in real life I think it looks cuter you know make them friend shaped and you know experiment with like their expression and how can I change their bodies to make them like extra cute and so yeah working on that series really helped me develop my style. That's great. And when I was looking at those, at that series, and when you talk about earlier how you have this, you're a kid at heart and you love colors, you are you have a cat named Velvet and you're working on a book which centers on Velvet's story or her you know, personality. Looking at your style right now, I would say in my personal opinion that it's sort of an extension of who you are. I mean, person, your personality. And I think that's amazing because art should be self-expression. And would you say, if if there's anyone listening as an artist, would you say that it it would be be a good recommendation to just let your personality flow in through your art, whether Mm -hmm. style or is it, it, do you think that would be a good recommendation for anyone just starting out? And like what you said, you were at the beginning, like trying out different things and you're not, very sure what your style was going to be. Yeah, I would say that is, that would be great advice. And I mean, it takes time. You're not going to sit down with a sketchbook and like, boom, like I made the perfect piece of art. I'm going to keep doing this forever. Like it takes a lot of experimenting. And like, perhaps part of that is like just figuring out what you like as Mm -hmm. a person, as, as an artist, like the type of art I'm making I think it definitely reflects who I am and the things that I like and the interests that I have. Um, But I also make the type of art that I would like to look at or that I would like to purchase as well. So yeah, I think, you know, consider all of your tastes and the things that you like and draw inspiration from all those different things. Thanks, Lina. This is a really good advice. Having an extension of yourself at the same time, creating something that you would personally would want to purchase. In your client work, has has there been a point wherein you were asked to commission or to do something that is totally different from your style? 
Yeah, that happens sometimes. And I think, I think some people, they may want to have a custom piece done and they're like, oh, well, I know an artist. So I'm going to immediately go to that person. And they don't consider that that person may be specialized in something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> To anyone who might be listening, if you want a custom piece done, you should shop around a little bit and look at a few different artists and look at look at their portfolio. So like, mm -hmm. you know, look through the Instagram page and see like, does their style suit what you want? I mean, it doesn't happen too often, but occasionally I have people ask me like, can you can you draw my wedding bouquet or, and, and um, you know, just look through my portfolio, like my, my portfolio. And if you think it's a good match, then sure. And then, you know, sometimes I don't hear from them people and that's okay. Like not everybody's yeah. going to be into your art, but you got to find the people who are into it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of finding your right audience. And I think that's, that's what you, you meant about, you know, not everyone will like what you do, but sometimes there are people who would reach out to you just because they know that you're a great artist, but, not really thinking that you're specialized in the medium or yeah. a specific style. So you, recently you wrote an article about ways to sell art. And I think you're a good Hollywood perfect resource to talk about this. And, you know, personally, as an artist, I would, there's always this question of how can you get your art seen by your prospective clients and customers? Where should you publish them? How are you going to sell them? Or is it even is there even a way to really sell them because mm -hmm. right now with the, with the rise of social media is there a better way of utilizing social media to get your art seen yeah can you take us uh, can you share a little bit more about that article i think you mentioned six ways to yeah definitely well first i would like to mention and i don't i don't think i touched on this in the article but if, if you're somebody who likes making art and you want to start doing it professionally and i tell all my friends this who are in a similar situation just put it out there like just take pictures of it and post it like that is like step one because if you're just if you're just in your apartment or your house making art and not telling anybody about it then no one's going to know about it so just step sure. one just get it out there <laughs> somehow yeah. and social media is a great outlet um but if you're past that and you're ready to you know find the different ways of selling i i broke it down into six different ways um there's obviously many ways to sell your art but the, it's six ways that I've personally used. So wholesale, so, or maybe I should start with retail because people are more familiar with retail. So retail, I make product and I sell it directly to my customers. So I have an online shop. I do physical events. So you know, art conventions, craft shows and things like that. So people come to my booth and they buy a product and they take it home and they're like the final user. So they're probably gonna put the art up in their home or they're gonna send that greeting card or they may give it to somebody else, but they're, they're the final person. And then there's wholesale. And a lot of people think wholesale is very scary, but basically you typically, I mean, it's not a, not written in stone, but typically you sell your product for half the price, but in a much larger quantity to okay. shops. Um, so usually it's people, some people would feel, oh, I'm losing money, but you just need to make sure that your retail price is appropriate for when you're selling things wholesale. And again, you're selling like in bulk to somebody. And it's a great way to get exposure too. you know, for example, I live here in New Brunswick and I have shops, I have shops in New Brunswick carrying my work, but I also have shops in Nova Scotia and in the Yukon carrying my work too. So now those are new audiences that are seeing my work and consignment, which is similar to wholesale, except you're not really selling your work, you're placing mm -hmm. it in a shop and they, they pay you out per sale. So like okay. typically a consignment will take 50 to 60% and then they'll mm -hmm. pay you out the rest. So it's good to have a contract for that sort of relationship, but yeah, that's it's similar to wholesale. Okay. The fourth would be commissions, which I touched on a little bit. Yeah. So that's when you're, you're making custom artwork for clients. Um, and it's been a great revenue stream for me. The type of custom work will depend on what you feel like doing, what your clients are interested in. So for me personally, I've broken it down into pet portraits, family portraits, and just general character design. So if someone mm -hmm. has, you know, their own character, maybe they're writing their own book. Maybe it's not a picture book. They want something for a cover. They could come to me and I can help make that for them. And um, then there's also print on demand. So something like uh, Redbubble, for example, mm -hmm. you can upload your artwork and then put your artwork on like dozens of different products um, and sell through that website. So you make less money per sale that way. You know, you might only make like, if you sell a $40 t-shirt, you might only see 
ten dollars of that mm-hmm. um but it means you don't have an inventory so okay. it takes like a huge amount of work off of your shoulders mm-hmm. um but it's best if you have like an existing audience to kind of funnel traffic into that okay and then finally there's licensing so let's say you're in chapters or just, just as an example maybe walmart is a better example let's say you're mm-hmm. in walmart and you're looking in the greeting card section all the artwork on those greeting cards that was licensed so like hallmark licenses artwork from other artists so that's something else to consider as well. Thank you so much, Mina. I, I feel like the, that was a crash course, mini crash course of how to sell your art. And that article, I'm sure for artists who have read it and those who have heard it here on Make More Art would definitely benefit in you know, just having the idea because there are a lot of information out there, but hearing it straight from someone who has been doing it is really going to be helpful for anyone who would like to venture into a creative entrepreneurship. We're nearing the end of the episode, Vina, but you mentioned earlier that you're writing a book and you said that the manuscript is ready. I just want to highlight again that this is about Velvet, your cat. And it's a children's illustration book, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't have a date yet as to when Mm -hmm. that will be published. But can you take us through what made you decide to write a book and to feature your cat as the center of it? Yeah, so... I I think I had mentioned earlier that I really love illustrated books and I collect them. Yeah. Um, and of course I have a cute art style, which sort of suits that, you know, suits that industry. And I had a lot of friends suggest, hey, you should really consider doing a book. And it was something I had wanted to do for a long time. Of course, it takes a lot of work to do that. It's, you know, I think I spent like a year working on it. Mm-hmm. So I had applied for a creation grant from Arts MB, which is a It's like a provincial funding body for artists Mm -hmm. in New Brunswick. So I applied for the grant to ask if they would help cover my cost of living while I worked on the manuscript. And I got accepted, which totally made my year. So that happened at the end of 2019. Um, And then, yeah, I just started working. First, I need to nail down the written manuscript. So what are the lines? Like, what's what's the story? Mm -hmm. need to edit it. What's the main character going to look like? And I chose my cat for inspiration just because I, I really love my cat. She's so <laughs> sweet. I've had her since she was five weeks old and she's 13 now. So she's been oh. with me for a long time, but she's still totally a kitten despite being 13. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I want I wanted to use her as the basis um, because she's already very cute. So it's just in a stylized <laughs> version of her. And um, yeah, and I so I wanted to write the book one because it was something I wanted to do for a long time, but to now I have this as an example in my portfolio, you know, if someone wanted me to illustrate a book for them in the future, I can show them, well, this is what I'm capable of. Here's an example of something else I've already done. Thanks, Vina. And uh, we're pretty excited. Hope you'll have a date set. I'm sure you will announce it on Instagram um, mm-hmm. and to any other platforms as to when that's going to be out. Um, I love the part that you feature something that you're one, you're passionate about illustration and that your love for illustration. And of course, a part of you, which is velvet. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's your style and your, your art pieces are extension of who you are, not just an artist, but who you are as a person. And I love that. For anyone who is starting out, whether it's a beginner or um, maybe someone who would want to venture into creative entrepreneurship, are there any pieces of advice that you would like our listeners to take away from this episode within that aspect? Yeah, I mean, just be prepared to not to not see success immediately. I mean, it takes well, it takes a long time to get started, like with any business. I mean, I think sometimes people poo-poo on artists and they think it's not a real job. And I mean, it's a business like any other and businesses take time to grow. So just make sure you are you're financially prepared, whether you, you already have savings or maybe you need a part time job to support yourself and just keep trucking along. Um, have faith in yourself, experiment, you know, if you notice that one thing is suddenly much more popular, then maybe that's something to explore more. And yeah, just be patient with yourself. I love that be patient with yourself, because you're absolutely right. Sometimes it can be very frustrating, and you want to see results immediately. But hearing your story, Vina, just made me realize, you know, whether it's art or anything, 
patience is key. And you've shown us that, I mean, throughout this, this interview, listening to you about how your style has changed through the years and then trying out these different things and making the decision to go full time and eventually now writing a book. Those are just some of the major items that as an artist, you would want to take off and say, these are the hashtag goals that I would want to achieve. So thank you so much, Vina, for sharing your story with us in journey. We look forward to seeing your book. And to anyone who's listening, Vina is teaching with us um, at Etris Studio. The live stream is November 8th and the workshop is the 23rd. Can you tell us what we will be doing for the live demo? Just a little bit to entice our audience as to what, what you will be teaching or demonstrating for the live demo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so because it's near the end of November, I was thinking, you know, we're all getting ready for the holiday season. So I would teach everybody how to create a cute, simple design that they can put on their own Christmas cards or holiday cards in general. Oh, that's going to be perfect. I'm sure a lot of people will tune in because I think there's something just thoughtful and sincere when you make your own Christmas cards. So that would be a good way for them to really learn how to create their own by watching your live demo. Vina, thank you again for being on the show, uh, Make More Art. And we look forward, one, on your live demo and mini workshop, and then two, the release of your books. And of course, the artworks that you will be creating and publishing on Instagram. So we look forward to seeing more of you on those platforms. And again, thank you for being on the show. And we'll catch you again soon for your live demo. Thanks, Vina. Thanks for having me. Art is about self-expression and Vina Carr to get to heart. Her upcoming book about her cat, Velvet, her color choices, and even her article for Created Here detailing ways to get your art seen is a true testament of how she allows her personality to shine through her words. How about you? Do you inject your personal favorites and preferences in your artworks too? Well, do share with us your comments through the blog post associated with this podcast at etcherlab.com slash Wanna know what goes behind the scenes here at Etcher? We heard ya. We are lifting the curtain and giving you VIP access to do just that. Get to know who does what here at Etcher Lab. <laughs> so joining me today for the Etcher Team Spotlight is Marielle Solomon, aka Mar. She is our branding and marketing manager for Etcher, and she is described as an ocean lover mermaid with a heart of gold who inspires a team with her marketing planning skills. Welcome to the show, Mar. Thanks so much for having me. That was really sweet, like that in- introduction. <laughs> I love you know, the, the vibe where you're at. And just to let everyone know, you are currently in Tragao, yeah. which is an island in the Philippines. I'm so, yeah. <laughs> so it's true. like this remote tiny island in the Philippines with like beautiful beaches. It's really beautiful here. I'm actually in a restaurant because like being on an island, our Wi-Fi is not that reliable. So mm-hmm. most ways you'll find me here working. Working remotely on an island, side a beach, just a dream. <laughs> so Mar, you do branding and marketing for Etcher. So I'm sure a lot of people are quite curious about the word or term branding. So can you share a little bit more about that? Um, well, branding is how the consumer perceives basically the brand. You know, so I'm in charge, not just me though, but along with the rest of the team and Anya, our art director, we're in charge of um, creating this kind of persona of how other people see us, the brand etcher. Yeah, so that's that's basically it. Thanks, Mar. I love that, that it's about the persona because as a host with an etcher, that's the kind of feel that we've been getting from our community is that etcher makes art very accessible to them. And I think that's the whole Etcher brand. What is a typical day for you as a branding and marketing manager? Yeah. Okay. So for me, what I do in a day is I basically come up with new ideas for events, Mm -hmm. um, for ads, and yeah, just day-to-day stuff. I handle the ads. I come up with the messaging, like what kind of message goes to which channel, for which, you know, level in the customer journey so I handle that um and as well as launches so like events and 
So events which include launches, maybe um, holidays as well, mm. and just our challenges and fun things for our community to do. Like the fun home. things. Yeah. So pretty much everything that we've been seeing. So the story behind each of the content that we have, you are sort of the brain behind that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all about branding and like what you said it's about the personality of extra yeah. and what we're putting out there so it looks like you're kind of spread out on doing a lot of things um keeping you busy i'm sure because you mentioned holidays and then the challenges and we have different platforms that we manage so tell me mar what's your most favorite thing about your job or working at extra um in general i just like the vibe that you know everyone I work with gives all I've said from the moment I started working at Etcher is that it's always just been my favorite company that I've worked for ever I've never met such you know genuine people like even though it's always been 100% remote I've actually made some really good friends within the company and yeah I just love how everyone's so forgiving and everyone understands the concept of work-life balance. That's something hard to find. So. We share the same sentiments about work. <laughs> <laughs> that's sure. Thank you so much, Mar. And uh, I'm sure we're going to be seeing more of your works, especially the branding and the marketing side. But it gives our community an opportunity to get to know you a little bit more and to visualize where you are right now, surrounded by lush greeneries and blues in an, on an island. So thank you, Mar, for your time. And it's so great to hear from you and see you out from Shargao. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah. Thanks for giving us this platform. Thank you so much, Mar. We'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We would love to hear your thoughts. So please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast where you can find us on YouTube at Etra Studio. And oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.